During this week's episode of Celebrating Science, we'll be looking back in time at the life of Beatrix Potter. Today, she is best known as a children's book author and illustrated of now classic childhood stories about characters like Peter Rabbit, Mrs. Tiggy Winkle, and Squirrel Nutkin. But she was also a scientist who attempted to have her scientific works on fungi published. She was a farmer who amassed more than 4,000 acres of land in her lifetime. And she was also a conservationist as she used the proceeds from her books and other works to purchase those acres of land near her home in the Lake District of England. Born in 1866 to wealthy parents, Helen Beatrix Potter and her younger brother Bertram reared many companion animals, including hedgehogs, rabbits, and they observed many others in nature. Victorian era women couldn't participate in most facets of public scientific life, but nature study was encouraged as a hobby. An accomplished and studious watercolor artist and illustrator, Beatrix became particularly fascinated by fungi. She collected specimens, observed them under her brother's microscope, studied them in London museums, and painted them. She became a mycologist, someone that studies and becomes an expert in mushrooms and, their, and fungi through her careful attention to detail and fascination with all of their forms. In 1897, she had done such thorough studies of mushrooms that she wrote and illustrated a scientific paper. Women at that time were not allowed to join or even listen to presentations in scientific societies, so her uncle presented her paper in front of the Linnaean Society of London, a premier natural science institution where men could research, publish, present, access a library, and debate on natural history topics. While her scientific works didn't receive the attention or funding she hoped for, she turned to self-publishing a story called The Tale of Peter Rabbit in 1902, based off a series of illustrated letters she had sent to a friend's sick child. She would eventually publish more than 30 books, mostly illustrated stories for children. She was also an extremely savvy businesswoman and designed, patented, and marketed games, dolls, toys, and home goods, and more with her characters. She was one of the first authors to do so, and it built her wealth in a way that few women had the opportunity to in her time. Beatrix Potter then used her wealth to purchase a farm in the Lake District of England, where she would farm, purchase additional acres of land, and become heavily involved in the preservation of the countryside that she so loved to roam and to study, and that was the inspiration for so much of her scientific and public work. When she died in 1943, she left about 4,000 acres of land to England's National Trust, which eventually became Lake District National Park. Beatrix Potter's stories and characters continued to charm children and their families, so she remains a well-known and beloved author. But her fungi paintings and illustrations, donated to England's Armit Museum and Library, are still used for identification today. And in 1997, the Linnaean Society issued an official apology for the way they treated her and her paper in 1897. If you would like to learn more about Beatrix Potter as a scientist, author, and illustrator, there are many books available for children and adults. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Celebrating Science.